Hi guys, I welcome you to the tutorial series on artificial intelligence and today our topic is inference rules. And you know in the previous lecture we have gone through one important topic that, uh, that is predicate logic and I am giving the link in the description below. So you go through it if you have not already and watch this video till the end because one question will be asked at the end and that will be very important for you. So you need to comment the answer of that question. And myself Dr. Diboji Dibora and you subscribe this channel if you have not already and share with your friends. Well, let's start then. So what is inference? Inference means to create new logic from old logic. That is, generating the conclusions from evidence and facts is known as inference. Just remember that when we go for deriving a new logic from all existing logics, then that is known as inference. Okay, so what is inference rule? Inference rules are applied to derive proofs in artificial intelligence and this proof is a sequence of the conclusion that leads to the desired goal. And we use connectives in these rules. So obviously inference rules will be used during the process of inference where we go for deriving new thing from the old th logic. and. There we need to use some operators and connectives are used as operators during the inference procedure. Okay, so connectives. As in the previous lecture, I have already illustrated uh, different connectives. Now, these are very important with respect to inference. First one is implication. You know implication is P implies Q and the truth values or I can say the truth table with respect to implication is also important. So I suggest that the previous lecture go through it and the link you will find in the description as I have already said. So that will help you to understand these things. Okay, so implication means P implies Q. Then converse. Converse of implications means the right hand side proposition goes to the left hand side and vice versa. So right hand side goes to the left hand side. In this implication, P implies Q. Which one is the right hand side? Right hand side is this one. So is, this will come here and this will come here. That is Q implies P. So converse of P implies Q is Q implies P. Then contrapositive. The negation of converse is termed as contrapositive. Negation of converse. So negation of Q implies negation of P. Okay, this is contrapositive. Negation of Q implies negation of P. Then inverse. The negation of implication is called inverse. So implications negative, not contra, uh, converse negative. So implications negation will be negation of P implies negation of Q. Okay. So you may confuse with this contrapositive and in inverse. Contrapositive is the negation of converse and inverse is the negation of implication. Okay. So now types of inference rules. So here we will discuss some important types. The first one is modus ponens. And this is very important. Just believe me, you will find this modus ponens in such competitive examinations where standard is high. Okay, they frequently ask these questions. So modus ponens rule states that if P and P implies Q is true, then we can infer that Q will also be true. And it will be written like this. You can take a screenshot of this. P implies Q, comma, P divided by therefore Q. This means P and Q, P plus Q is happening with P. That is P plus Q is true and P is also true. This implies Q. Clear. Now I am giving an example that will be more clear to you. So first statement is if I am hungry then I go to restaurant. Say this is P plus Q. So I am hungry is P, P here and I go to restaurant is Q here. So second statement is what? I am hungry say P. So P plus Q and P. 
they are coming together so conclusion will be what i go to the restaurants as if i am hungry then i go to the restaurants so i am hungry is given so this implies i go to restaurant so i go to restaurant is our q hence if p implies q is true p is true then q will also be true clear i hope this will be very clear to you now next one is modas tollens this states that if p implies q is true and negation of q is true then negation of p will also be true that is p implies q comma negation of q and divided by negation of p okay don't confuse this the symbol we use both this symbol or this style symbol both of them actually represent the same thing that is negation clear so considering the same example if i am hungry then i go to restaurant p implies q so negation of q is given isn't it that is i did not go to restaurant or i do not go to restaurant that is negation of q so what will imply if i do not go to the restaurant this obvious that i am not hungry so conclusion will be i am not hungry so you see that if when p implies q and negation of q is given we have found that negation of p as the conclusion that is modus tollens so modus ponens and modus tollens are clear to you now coming to the next next is hypothetical syllogism well that sound this sounds may complicated but actually you have to remember these terms when you are dealing with artificial intelligence so hypothetical syllogism states that whenever p implies q is true and q implies r is true then p r implies r will be true okay so you know say i am considering an example first statement if you attend my artificial intelligence lecture then you will understand inference rules say this is p implies q second statement if you understand inference rules then you can derive new statements from old ones that is q implies r you can easily detect which one is p which one is q and which one is r so p is if you uh, you attend my artificial intelligence lecture q is you will understand inference rules and r is you can derive new statements from old ones so conclusion according to hypothetical syllogism will be if you attend my artificial intelligence lecture then you can derive new statement from old ones that is p implies r i hope this example will make clear this concept about hypothetical syllogism to you okay try to frame a new such example by yourself that will help you of course next disjunctive syllogism and this states that if p disjunction q is true and negation of p is true then q will be true so p disjunction q negation of p divided by q this means this q will be obvious then as you know p disjunction q will be true when either p or q will be true if both or either it is okay so negation of p is true negation of p is true means what p is false so p is false as and p disjunction q is true so q should be what true then only you will get p disjunction q is true okay so from this two we can derive that q is true got it now i am giving practical example now suppose first statement you are student or professional say this is p disjunction q second statement you are not student that is negation of p conclusion you are professional q why because you see you are either student or professional but it is given that you are not student so it means what you are professional then only p disjunction q is true okay so conclusion is q according to the disjunctive syllogism well i hope this concept is clear if still ha you have doubt then don't means uh, hesitate to ask me through a comment i'll respond respond those comments okay now coming to the next addition uh, here addition is a little bit different this rule states that if p is true 
then P disjunction Q will be true. If you think deeply, then it is obvious. Say, see, P is true. So, P disjunction Q will be true always, whatever the value of Q is given. As you know, P disjunction Q will be true when either P or Q is true. It is not necessary that both of them should be true. Yeah, if both of them, P and Q are true, then always P disjunction Q will be true. But it is always true when at least one of them is true. As P is given true, so this value P disjunction Q is always be true. That is addition. Clear? Now, coming to an example of addition. Say you are a student, the previous example, that is P, and you are a professional, Q. Okay, so conclusion will be what? You are a student or professional, P disjunction Q. Suppose if it is given that you are a student, P, but you are not a professional. Okay, what you can conclude? Comment your answer. Okay, then simplification. This rule states that if P conjunction Q is true, then Q or P, P will be also be true. That is P conjunction Q. This is given as true. So, of course, if P conjunction Q is true, then both of them should be true. Then only you will get this value as true. So, if P conjunction Q is true, then P is true and Q is true. What is this? Uh, simplification is about to derive Q and P when P in, uh, conjunction Q is true. Okay. So, I hope this is clear. P conjunction Q divided by Q or P conjunction Q divided by P. Clear. So after simplification, I am coming to a next one. This is also very important. This is resolution or resolution. Okay. The resolution rule states that if P disjunction Q and negation of P conjunction R is true, then Q disjunction R will also be true. Now look at this rule very carefully. See P disjunction Q. This is given as true. So, either P is true or Q is true. Well, negation of P conjunction R. This is true. So, this is true only when both of them are true. Both of them, them are true means negation of P is true. If negation of P is true, that is, this means what? P is false. So, P is false in this first statement. If P is false, P disjunction Q is true. So, Q should be true. So, Q will come out. Now, from here, R is true, of course. Both of them should be uh, true. So, R is true. So, Q comes out. R comes out. So, both of them will form Q disjunction R. So, if P conjunction uh, disjunction Q and negation of P conjunction R is given, then we can infer Q disjunction R. Is this clear to you? You can take a screenshot of this. Very important rule. Okay. So, I uh, we have covered all the imp important inference rules okay so i hope you have gone through this lecture very carefully from the very beginning and you take screenshot of each of this rule now coming to the question of today's class today's question is there is a rule which states that if p and p implies q is true then we can infer that q will be true what is the name of the rule? So you need to comment the name of this rule. Rule states that P is true and P implies Q is true. And this implies Q is true. What is the name of the rule? Either it is modus tollens or either it is modus ponens or it is simplification or it is, you know, resolution, whatever the answer. You comment your answer. Okay, so I hope this lecture is uh, very clear to you about the inference rules. If you like this video, do so like it and subscribe this channel if you have not already and also share with your friends so that they will also get benefited from this video. So, guys, then we will meet in the next lecture. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.